a small glimpse into the fish and fishery. All the work done by the GLFC is aimed at protecting and bettering the fishery. What do I mean by fishery? Well, let me explain. The Great Lakes fishery encompasses all commercial, recreational, and tribal fisheries in the Great Lakes region. Collectively, these fisheries are valued at more than $7 billion each year, and the fishery directly supports more than 75,000 jobs. Lake whitefish, walleye, yellow perch, and ciscos are the foundation of the commercial fishery, while salmon, walleye, trout, and muscalunge, among many other species, help comprise the world-class recreational fishery. However, the fish harvested for the fishery are not the only species out there. Without other native fish and other parts of the food web, the fishery would not be a reality. In addition, there are non-native and invasive species that play a role in the ecosystem. And as we've learned with the invasive sea lamprey, they cannot be ignored. Let's talk a bit about other native and non-native Great Lakes fishes. The Great Lakes support about 140 native species of fish. Sculpins, gizzard shad, several species of shiners, and ciscos sustain top predators, including lake trout, walleye, large and smallmouth bass, and brook trout. In addition, some forage species such as ciscos and yellow perch provide recreational and commercial fishing opportunities. At least 34 non-native fish species are present in the Great Lakes. These species have been introduced through multiple vectors or pathways. Some of these non-native fish have been intentionally introduced by humans. Perhaps most notable of these are three species of Pacific salmon that were introduced in the mid-1960s and are now a major component of the Great Lakes recreational fishery. Other non-native species have been introduced unintentionally or accidentally. Pathways of unintentional introduction include migration around barriers and through canals, discharge of ballast water from cargo ships, escapement from aquaculture facilities, and release of live bait. What turns a species from just being non-native to being considered invasive? Invasive species are non-native species that proliferate or reproduce quickly and easily, and that cause harm to an ecosystem. Invasive species often have a widely disruptive effect on native fish populations through competition for food and habitat or predation. The result is often a ripple effect throughout the food web that leads to ecological and economic harm. Sea lampreys, alewives, and quagga mussels are among the worst invasive species in the Great Lakes. Several others you may or may not have heard of include zebra mussels, bithotrephes, also known as the spiny water flea, and round gobies. Working to better understand the impacts that existing invasive species have on the Great Lakes is important to the GLFC mission. In addition, the GLFC is actively working to understand the degree of risk posed by potential future invaders, such as Asian carp. A final category of fish important to mention include those that are considered threatened or endangered. During the previous two centuries, the fish fauna of the Great Lakes has been altered dramatically due to increasing human populations, the global movement of goods, which has contributed to a rise in the introduction and spread of invasive species, and also overfishing. As a result of these pressures, 18 native species, including several species of ciscos that historically comprise the bulk of the fish biomass in most of the Great Lakes, have been extirpated from at least one Great Lake. Today, 61 fish species in the Great Lakes are considered threatened or endangered. One of these fish, the lake sturgeon, is the region's oldest and largest fish species. Lake sturgeon were historically abundant in the Great Lakes, but were considered a nuisance fish by early fishermen because they would become entangled in gill nets and destroy them. 
However, by the early 1900s, many populations of lake sturgeon were either greatly reduced or extirpated throughout the region due to overfishing, habitat loss, dam construction, and pollution. Much work is being done by the GLFC, our partners, and other organizations around the Great Lakes to support restoration of this important species. What does the future look like for the Great Lakes fishery? Those of us at the GLFC believe the future of the fishery is bright. It is considered a Canadian and U.S. treasure, and we do our work to ensure it is treated as such, both today and long into the future. The fishery is integral to a healthy Great Lakes environment. It attracts millions of anglers and continues to provide jobs, recreation, subsistence, and food. To support the millions of anglers that come to the lakes from around the globe and to rehabilitate stressed fisheries, agencies stock fish in the Great Lakes each year. Management agencies in both nations, through stewardship and rehabilitation efforts, remain capable and committed to addressing and anticipating the challenges that confront this amazing resource. A healthy, vibrant Great Lakes fishery is good for the economy and the environment.